y'all. Welcome to my craft shed. Today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this two-sided wooden box from Dollar Tree. Uh, I painted one side orange and I painted the other side in a chalk paint color. This side I'm going to do orange. This side I'm going to do in this chalk paint. It's a kind of a beige color. My camera messed up and missed part of the um, beginning where I was painting the orange. So, but you can see, I, I paint, I'm painting it a pumpkin orange. I'm painting the edges. You don't have to. You can stain them if that's what you prefer. It's just up to you, whatever you prefer to do. And now I'm getting out the... I can't remember the name of this color, but I mean, it's like mineral or something like that from the chalk paint. And I'm just putting a coat of that on here. Nothing real spectacular, just giving it a good base coat. doing the edges. When I bought this I thought it was a napkin holder. I didn't look at it too closely and I was going to put it on my table at Thanksgiving but now I realize it's just a small box and it won't hold napkins so I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to put it and what I'm going to do with it. I really don't know so if anybody has any good suggestions of what to use it for let me know in the comments. Right here I'm using a brown chalk paint to do the stems, do the edges of the stems too, if, if you want the edges painted, if not. I'm not painting on the back sides, I'm just going to stain all of that. Now I'm putting the brown on the base. And being careful not to get it anywhere else. Again, you don't have to paint the base if you don't want to. That's entirely up to you. You can just stain it, because it is a little harder and a little trickier, because you gotta make sure you don't get the paint up on where you've got the other paint. You don't wanna get it up on your orange or your beige. And you, if you wanna paint both sides in the pumpkin orange or both sides in the more farmhouse color, that's, it's all up to you, whatever you prefer. Now, I've let that dry, and now I'm going to put some detailing in. And then this is that same brown, just kind of dry brushed over the edge, just for some detailing to make it a little more rustic looking, because I like stuff more rustic. Again, that's, it's entirely up to you. I decided that the other side was a little too light. For my liking because I'm going to be sanding back over it so I'm going back to doing it a little bit thicker and I'm putting in some lines to give it some pumpkin details make sure you curve your lines think of the way the lines curve on a pumpkin a little bit of highlighting on that side and I smudged it with my finger so it's not so bright now I'm mixing up a darker orange to do the edges in and my detailing. This one has the cutout so I don't have to put those lines in there like I did on the other side. But I am going to kind of go around them a little with some of the darker color just so they pop out a little more. And it makes it a little more rustic and I like rustic. And there's all that detailing done. Now it's dry. This is a water-based stain that I'm using, not an oil-based, because it washes right out of your brushes. I think this is a Duncan brand, I think is what it was. I'm doing down in the box and everywhere. I'm doing all the unfinished wood first. Since it's a water-based stain, I don't want to leave it on my paint too long, because it can eat into your paint and take your paint right off. So I'm doing all the unfinished wood first. And 
I'm doing the bottom. You can paint the bottom in the brown or you can stain it, whichever you prefer. And now I'm doing the painted part last so that water-based stain won't eat into my paint too much. See, I don't leave it on there very long at all. I don't want to eat, let it eat into it. And I don't want this side stained as dark, so I'm just using a tiny bit on my rag and rubbing it on. It don't, a little bit goes a long way with this stuff, so it don't take much. If I just brushed it on there and then went back and wiped it off, it would leave it much darker than I wanted it to be. But then again, like I said, it's, it's up to your taste. Now I'm sanding my edges. And I stain it before I sand it and then stain again because I just like the way it layers the different colors and it all melds it together. It melds it together really good. They all blend good when they're all sanded together like that after you've stained. But around the edges I want, you know, less color, I want more wood showing through, but I don't want the white of the wood because I like it rusted. If you prefer the white, you don't have to stain it again. I prefer more rustic and primitive, so I'll be staining it again. And I like it really roughed up. I started with a um, coarser sandpaper and then I moved down to a finer sandpaper. And for this, I'm not going real heavy with the stain, so I'm just doing a little bit on the edge of the rag. I didn't really like the way the stems looked. I thought I didn't have enough off of them yet. So I went back and did them. And now I'm going to seal it. You can use the gloss or you can use the satin, whichever you prefer. Depending on... Um, well, that's not the satin, that's the matte, that's right. I haven't used the satin yet. That's the matte, so you can, but you can use any of them you prefer. Matte, satin, gloss, whatever look you're going for. I'm making sure I get all the sealer down everywhere all in it everywhere because I don't really know what I'm going to be using it for so I don't know what I might put down in there. I want to make sure it's sealed up really good and to make it good for wiping off. Now I've got it sealed up on the one side and I'm doing the other side the same sealer. You can put different sealers on either side if you want one side to be shinier than the other. I used the, um, I think I used the same one on both sides. I don't like things too shiny, but now I'm debating what I want to decorate it with. I think we'll go with these leaves. And this side I'm going to keep a little more simple. And my glue gun is not a very good one. I would not recommend that glue gun. It's a it's nice because it's cordless and I stand, but it is just not a good glue gun. It leaks glue. It makes a mess. I gotta get a new one. This side I'm putting the two leaves. The other side I just did a raffia bow and one of those little um, sunflowers that I found at Hobby Lobby. And a little jute bow here. And that's really all I'm going to do to it. There you go. There's the finished box. Now I just got to figure out what I'm going to put in it and use it for. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.